26 people are being killed in an airstrike by the Saudi-led coalition in northern Yemen. I must warn you, you may well find the following images disturbing. The strike hit a hotel and a busy market. According to local media, the area was crowded with civilians. Video shows the market has been completely destroyed. And it's just the latest deadly airstrike carried out by the Saudi-led coalition since 2015. In a statement, the coalition says that it's now conducting a review of its actions. Joint Forces Command also adds that it forces work to the highest measures of targeting. However, since the start of the Saudi intervention, the crisis in Yemen's continued to deteriorate on an almost daily basis. Again, the following images could well be upsetting. <laughs> And I'm joined on the line now by Ralph El Hajj, ICRC regional spokesperson. Um, Ralph, horrible pictures, terrible suffering, uh, the media reporting children have died. What's your organisation's uh, reaction? Do you have any information to add to what we've heard already? Good evening to you and to your viewers. Uh, indeed, shocking images again and again from Yemen. Unfortunate civilians continue to bear the brunt and pay the price for a war that has wrecked havoc in the country for over two years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, airstrikes, shelling, and the war in Yemen continues to kill more and more innocent civilians. Our organization, the International Committee of the Red Cross, continues to monitor the situation and continues to bring humanitarian aid to the victims, especially the civilians. That's what we can do right now. And uh, unfortunately, this isn't the first time that civilians pay the price. Over 10,000 people have already died. More than 2.9 million people have fled their homes because of uh, destruction and because of uh, devastation to the infrastructure in the country. Electrical power plants do not function as normal. More than 90% of the Yemeni people do not have public electricity at the moment. Uh, not to mention access to clean water and most important of all, access to health care. I mean, sadly, not enough people, I think, actually see on their TVs what is going on in Yemen. Um, if we compare it to other, you know, disaster areas around the world, how bad is the situation there? I mean, are we talking like one of the biggest, if not the biggest catastrophe at the moment? Indeed, Yemen is witnessing one of the worst armed conflicts in the Middle East, if not in the world, uh, just like Syria and Iraq. And the Middle East in itself faces one of the worst catastrophes or armed conflicts since World War II. Uh, millions of civilians have fled. Over 47 million people in the Middle East need humanitarian aid, and humanitarian organizations are just not able to function well uh, with lack of access, lack of being able to deliver what they have been entrusted to do in terms of helping the victims of the, of the armed conflicts. The country said to be on the brink of famine. There's an outbreak of cholera and we've seen the photographs which are horrendous. How long will it take, if at all, can Yemen return to normal life ever? For, for Yemen and the Yemeni people to return to normal life, there has to be some sort of an end to the conflict. Political solutions should be reached. Humanitarian aid and humanitarian work is not a solution. It's just a patch on the wound, and the wounds are increasing. When we talk today on about the cholera crisis, more than 850,000 people in Yemen uh, have been uh, uh, affected or are, are suspected cases with cholera. However, we have seen in the past few, past few days that the cholera crisis is being contained. Less cholera cases are being reported, and that is at least some good news coming out of the country. We shouldn't forget that this isn't only the problem today in Yemen. We have the port of Hodeida, which was the main line of commodities, food, fuel, and everything that the, basic, uh, the people of Yemen need as basic necessities. This port is currently non-functional. 
Likewise, uh, the Sana'a airport, which is also a, a main source of travel for the Yemenis and could have saved a lot of lives if it was still functioning, because a lot of Yemenis could have traveled abroad for the necessary uh, healthcare treatment. Today, more than 50% of the health uh, health facilities in Yemen do not function. Many people die because they cannot travel, They're, they cannot pay for transport to reach the closest hospital or clinic that is able to treat uh, their cases. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is really unfortunate and, and gives us a picture of a catastrophic situation the Yemeni people uh, unfortunately continue to face day after day. Ralph, appreciate your thoughts and for coming on RT. Ralph El-Hajj, ICRC regional spokesperson.